Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today I'm going to be talking all about competitive combrams. Go for CA versus Woggle versus PCM. Now, if you're a relatively new combrams play, you would have absolutely no idea what those three words are just meant. But basically, those are three different rule sets that players have gone and used throughout the lifetime of combrams in order to go and conduct competitive matches. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down all three of these rule sets, and then I'm going to be doing a bit of contrasting, comparing, and then from there, I'm going to go and put forward a few ideas that I have in order to go and improve the current Nexon implemented competitive rule set PCM. How to go and improve that, how to go and make that the truly definitive competitive experience that players have been longing for. Now, before I start, I have gone and played Combatums on all three of these rule sets, including the CGL rule set, but I'm going to be talking about that in the Woggle section because they are very similar. Now, I've never gone and played Combatums in a professional setting, in a tournament setting, so my view will differ to somebody that has. But my opinion on this whole topic is to go and make Combatums a competitive esport while still being accessible to casual players. I believe I bring a dual perspective because a lot of my 7 plus years of combat arms has been going and keeping in touch with the competitive community. Going and playing in Woggle pub rooms, CGO pub rooms, go for CA pub rooms. But with that said, I also go and play a shit ton of casual games because that's what the majority of people play. And therefore, that's what the majority of people want with my gameplay. And I'm happy to go and do that because I like playing combat arms casually as well. So I have both perspectives, and today I'm going to go and bring forth ideas to the PCM rule set. So hopefully somebody that has gone and played casually for their whole life, gone and run around with NX gear and NX weapons for their whole life, hopefully that type of player could go and hop into a competitive room and have fun. That's the ultimate goal. Because having a competitive rule set, a competitive mode where there's no bullshit weapons and no bullshit gear is, in my opinion, the best way for combat arms to become great again. But also the best way for combat arms to grow again in order for this game to become popular again. And with that said, let's get right into it. Now, I'll go and explain all these rule sets in detail, as NA players might not know about Go for CA and EU players might not know about Woggle and so on and so on. So we'll go and start out with the most strict rule set first, and that is Go for CA. Go for CA was the largest combat arms tournament, with a final prize pool of 30,000 euros. The grand final was played in the ESL Cologne Studios, and it had a big production on Twitch and whatnot, and overall it's the most professionally done tournament to date for combat arms. Now, this tournament was the foundation of Combat Arms Esports. However, this was never built upon because of the lack of a Season 2. It is by far the most restrictive rule set of the three, as you can see on the screen, and there is a lot to go and point out. There is a very small pool of primary weapons, with the G36E being banned completely. In competitive play, generally only the M4A1 or the MK16 Scar Rail were used for riflers, with the LNA6A1 being the only scope option that people actually use. There was, there was the M24, but with that said, all the other weapons that were available, nobody really used them. In terms of secondaries, you could only go and use the M92FS, the default pistol, with melee, only the M9, and with nades, you could only use the default frag or the smoke grenade. In terms of equipment, zero speed, default vest, and only cosmetic hat and face. Of course, it's male base only, and the only customization that could be done to your weapon is equipping a suppressor, being an S1, S2, or S3. With all of that said, I think introducing the PCM rule set and then comparing would be better, so let's go right onto that. Now, PCM is Nexon's official competitive mode. However, there has been no comp competitions to date that Nexon have gone and hosted with this rule set. It differs the go for CA quite drastically in some very key areas. Now, in terms of primaries, there is a slightly wider pool. The additions being the FS-2000 and the M14 for assault rifles, the K7 and MAC-10 for SMGs, the SR-25 and the MSG-90, both semi-automatic sniper rifles for the sniper rifle category, and the MG-21 and RPK being allowed for the MG category. 
On top of this, the ACR was taken away. But all in all, this whole widening of the pool really didn't affect the primary weapon usage in pub rooms, with maybe the SR-25 cropping up once in a while for the cheese element, but overall, the fact that there is more guns to choose from is good, but a lot of players simply stuck to the tried and true weapons that we saw in Go for CA games. Now, secondaries is where the big difference is. In PCM, players can go and use the M92FS, the default weapon, the K5, the M1911 MEU, the G23, the USP, the Desert Eagle, and the Cobra. Now, the reason Go for CA banned these pistols, more specifically the USP and M19 MEU back in the day, is the fact that these have the percent potential to go and free shot an enemy, like the G36E. If these weapons were in Go for CA, the player basically had a G36E in their back pocket. Now, I agree with secondary bans to an extent. Having some freedom to go and choose a secondary is good, i.e. in CSGO, but making them primary weapon replacements isn't good. Look at the launch CZ-75 and R8 Revolver, for example. In PCM, at this very moment, it is a very big problem. Mostly the Cobra and M1911 MEU, as the Revolver does 70 damage, the Cobra does 70 damage, so it's basically a pocket M24, and the M1911 is basically a pocket G36E, as that can really, really easily free shot. This definitely needs to be looked at by Nexon. Overall, pistols are very, very, very strong in combat arms. You can't really see it in casual play, but in competitive, they are very, very, very strong. So overall, going for the go for CA approach of just banning every pistol besides the M92FS would be the uh, best approach in my opinion. Freedom to choose will come up quite a bit in this video, and there is an underlying theme. A perfect PCM will ensure a fair experience, but it also has to go and allow casual players to easily understand and more importantly adapt to these rules when they finally get to go and play PCM. But on top of that, if there is too much of a difference between PCM and normal play, casual players will be very, very confused, but also new players that might be drawn to the game from example tournaments on Twitch they would be repelled also because there is such a stark difference between casual and competitive. Overall, there is a lot to go and weigh up and that becomes very, very, very important later on down in this video. In terms of melee, you have a few options, but no one really cares because the tracker knife and the tiger strider isn't there, so you're not going to get a massive weight advantage. Now for grenades, PCM allows the XM84 flash. Now, I'll probably make an entirely different video on smoke and flash grenades and combat arms, but at the moment it is completely broken. It is a 10 second blind if you're hit point blank. 4 seconds I believe if you're not even looking in the same direction of the flash. It's extreme and it needs a complete rework before competitive matchmaking. Now smokes are stupid as well. There is pathetic smoke density. You can see the player's red name which is another underlying issue and therefore another video and it dissipates far too quickly. Smokes and flashes are needed for a tactical and competitive mode, but their current state is not good enough and it really, really needs a lot of work. Now moving on to customization. Only the S1 and S2 suppressors are allowed for the suppressor field, but the ACOGs are allowed as well. Now this is a very, very, very big no-no. The reason? Scoping in resets your spread in combat arms. I try not to go and use it because it's straight up broken, but if you're mid-spray and you scope in, your spread resets, which obviously shouldn't happen and gives you a major advantage. Nexon, fix scopes or get rid of them, either or. Now before I talked about freedom, and gear is where it becomes questionable about where to go and draw the line. PCM and Go for CA both agree that head and face gear should not go and provide any stats to the player. Now Go for CA says no vest, but PCM allows the light, medium and heavy vest. Now this has gone and stirred up quite a controversy in the community. It has competitive purists saying that it should be zero speed. And the reason why they're saying that is everybody in their mind should be on the same footing. Nobody should have an advantage or a disadvantage in terms of speed. And thus, this won't have an effect in overall who is a better play on the battlefield. Now on top of this, everybody being on the same speed means that nade timings, rush timings, and that will all perform consistently in a match. But on the other hand, the vast majority of combat arms players use some type of speed. Making everyone use 0% would be quite a stark difference to casual matches. Now, 
different speeds could also go introduce a new metagame of sorts of working out who has what gear early in the match and then building strategies around that. For example, the l 6 a one player could go and have a heavy vest and therefore you would go and use, let's say, an M4 player against them because it's really easy to go and get that one-shot headshot against a very slow-moving target. But if he's running a light vest, then you're going to use another l 6 a one user because you know he's not going to go and tank that shot. Stuff like that and playing around that could be an interesting uh, dynamic to competitive, but saying that it's another element and does Combat Arms competitive need another element? Well, that's up to community debate. Personally, I feel it's okay having light vests and heavy vests simply because more people would be willing to go and play the mode, but this is always up for debate. PCM also has fem base, and that is a very big no-no. It should be male base only so you don't go and get an advantage. Now, room setting is first to seven rounds with no side swapping. No backpack is integrated into PCM, but players can further restrict with no shotguns, no explosives, and so on, and that's kind of cool for pubs, but obviously it would just be normal for an actual competitive match. I don't think I mentioned it before, but go for CA in the 2013 Cup. That was played in a 4v4 format, but right now with the weekly Search and Destroy Cup, that is played in a 5v5 format. So overall, there is a bit of debate. Should PCM competitive matchmaking be played in a 4v4 format or a 5v5 format? Now personally, I really like the 5v5 format because you can do a default on the defense side where you have two people A site, two people B site, one person lurking. But then you can go and mix it up. You can go and stack a site and then have two people roaming and just leave a site. Or then you could go and maybe put three people on a site and then one person lurking and one person B site and all that type of stuff. But with a 4v4 format, you're really giving up one big element of the game in exchange for another. So if you're doing just a default to A to B, you're leaving no lurking element and that is quite big. But if you want a lurker, that means you're leaving one site basically on half defense and that is quite bad as well. And so every time you go on defense, you're always at a very big disadvantage. And so I think the 5v5 format would be better in my opinion. Now going back to PCM, a big thing is the fact that cosmetics are allowed. Now I'm not against cosmetics, I personally feel quite unique as one of the very few people in the game that have the, uh, the beret, the gas mask and the tiger camo all for permanent and people kind of notice me with that type of getup and it makes me stand out. So allowing that in PCM is cool. But saying that, full body cosmetics are a big no-no. In general, any cosmetic that goes and influences the player hitbox or makes enemies think you have a smaller or bigger hitbox should be banned outright. That being the Teletubby suit, the ghillie suit, the soccer jersey and so on. Overall, just go and ban character cosmetics outright and we'll be all good. Now let's go to Woggle and CGL. Now Woggle and CGL were the two big tournaments that will run on the NA servers. Now Woggle being the first from the 09 days and it ran for like six seasons or six or more seasons I believe. While CGL I believe it ran for two seasons around 2013-2014. Not 100% sure on those dates. Now, Woggle by far is the least restrictive of all the three, and you could go and use a ton of stuff, including the G36C with a limit of three per team, and the M416, but that was only in the first few seasons. For season six, all variants of the G36C and the M416 was removed completely. So let's go and use that rule set as a reference from now on. Now, looking at all the primaries that are included, I agree with the general idea. Did a lot of these guns get used? No, no, they did not. But the fact that the player had the freedom to go and use a weapon from a wide selection is great. Though there was many glaring issues with Woggle. The fact that the Orge 1 could be used, especially with its very useful scope, was a problem. The M200 being an alternative to the L96A1 means why would you use the L9? The M200 is much more accurate. And of course, the pistols. Legit, like, every pistol was allowed, and that is a very big problem. In terms of gear, it's basically the same for face and head, but Woggle allowed the light vest and Declan along with the default vest. Now, every single weapon attachment could be used, and that is a massive, massive problem in terms of the scopes. But saying that, I like the whole dynamic of uh, different magazines because it goes and just mixes it up a little bit. If you want the faster reloader, then you have to go and reload more, obviously, but you're going to be more ready for gunfights. If you want to go for big spray downs, there's the extended magazine. Having that 
it really won't go and make anything fair or not fair. It just goes and provides an interesting dynamic for players that want to go and muck around with it. One weird thing with Woggle is the fact that one person had to go and use a sniper rifle. But for Go for CA, that wasn't the case. And the reason I bring that up is because when you're out of the lobby and you swap sides, you're allowed to go and swap weapons. So for example, if you had one L9 and three M4s, you could get that L9 play onto an M4 when you're playing the attacking half in order to go for a more rush orientated strategy. And I think that would be really cool to go and implement into PCM, where you have, you know, a bit of a half time where you can, you go back to the lobby and you have 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever, you can go and swap out a weapon, you can go and mix up your strategy a little bit, and then it would be really, really cool, because obviously in combat arms, you're stuck with your weapon when you're in game when you're in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you go and buy the weapon every single round. But having that little half where you can go and swap weapons, I think that would be really, really cool. Going and adding an extra element to the game, going and adding an extra element to strategy. And so you can go and read your enemy for the first half, but then you won't really know what they're going to bring on the second half. I think that is really, really cool. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below and on the forms as well. Now I brought up CGL and CGL was basically along the same lines as Woggle, but from memory, there was a limit of one G36E per team and a cut down weapons list. So it's not really that important to go and talk about. Overall, what I get from Woggle is the fact that it was very open in terms of what primary weapons could be used. Now, of course, it was flawed with the secondaries and whatnot, but allowing more primaries will have little or no effect on the top levels of play. But for lower levels of play in, let's say, PCM, people have more choice on what they want to go and use. For some reason, a player might really, really like the L85A1. I personally hate the weapon, but... It's the same as picking an off-meta champion in League of Legends. Even though it might not be the best pick, the players want to go and use it, and thus they have the choice. So in conclusion, what's the best rule set? A combination of the three. PCM already has all the basic elements of a good competitive mode, but it needs a bit of tweaking. Chuck in the bigger pool of primaries from Woggle, and from the Gopher CA side, take away flashbangs or rework them, take away scopes and cosmetics, well within reason, I mean full body cosmetics, and restrict secondaries, and implement a side swapping mechanic. There is a little bit of work to be done, but with that done, PCM will take the best of both worlds, and honestly I think casual players could hop into it and have a really fun time. Now, it's a bit off track and has zero relevance for matchmaking, but for pubs, i.e. custom rooms or casual PCM rooms, make it so we can go and play 8v8. Doing an 8v8 go for CA custom room in combat arms right now is painful because three quarters of the game is asking, is somebody on the other team uh, go for? And then they say no, and then you've got to kick them, and overall, it's just a pain. So... Going and giving us 8v8 PCM, just for pubs, obviously, you know, matchmaking, competitive matchmaking would be 4v4 or 5v5, as I talked about before, but having it for pubs would be really, really cool. Overall, the rule set for PCM needs a bit of work, but it's getting there. However, there are many problems with the game itself that, that will go and pull CA back from being a great esport. I'll make sure to go and talk about these in another video, but it's stuff like flashbangs, smoke grenades, going and seeing red name tags, going and having third person spectator when you're dead. Stuff like that is really, really, really flawed and it needs to be fixed. Peaking as well, that needs to be fixed. There is a ton of stuff that the game needs to really go and develop before it can definitely be an eSport. Because it can. Because there is no free-to-play first-person shooter out there that is competitive. Combat Arms can go and take that. It can go and rival Counter-Strike, but it needs a ton of work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like rating. But other than that, Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.